is believe. Hello again and welcome to another edition of Hoosier Football Tailgate here on Thursday evening. I appreciate you joining me here tonight to talk a little bit of Hoosier football as well as go through this schedule the Hoosiers have for this season. Eight home games on tap for uh, IU and it's very, uh, I guess you could say, um, thankful schedule in that regard and uh, I think it's going to be a, a, a good overall uh, thing for Indiana being that Coach Signetti's in his first season but we will break all that down here in a moment want to do some quick things here off the top want to talk about Bet Online, the world's most trusted betting source and platform uh, for everything football from the preseason of the NFL to the college kick kicking off Bet Online has every stat every matchup and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. Think think you know your stuff? Get in on our winner. Take all $300,000. That's right, $300,000 survivor pool for the upcoming season. When the game's over, all over, head on over to our online casino. Get in on a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our over 150 slots. Head to the website today and use promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V and get in on all the action. Bet online is where the game starts. And uh, nice little pot there 300,000 uh, for the NFL survivor pool. Therefore, bet online, betonline.ag. And uh, very thankful for their support of everything here on the Believe Network as well as the Hoosier Football Tailgate. Also, would like to point out our affiliates that have joined us for this season. Appreciate them. I have a link uh, tree in my bio that will give you all of those uh, links to those different uh, stores uh, throughout um, uh, throughout the interweb i guess you could say but we'll give you a link right to the storefront and we'll you'll be able to do uh purchase whatever you would like to purchase but uh, everything from uh tailgates tailgate materials such as pit boss and louisiana grill that have some nice setups for uh miniature pellet smokers and grills uh, I mean uh, griddles uh, that are really nice uh, and compact and uh, Jackery a, a solar powered generator that I know that you could utilize on Saturday uh, when you're wanting to run power and you're having to run a thousand thousands of feet of extension cord somewhere but this will give you plenty of power right at your site there on saturdays uh, when you're uh, tailgating so they're on board but you can get all the list of all those companies that have jumped on with us um like i said last week sleep uh, eight sleep uh, joined on with us as well as uh fans edge and fanatics uh both have their uh indiana only store where you can get all types of Indiana, Indiana apparel. Uh, Hydrate Spark is a water bottle that has some unique features to it. But like I said, you can find that all there. Remember, if you do happen to purchase one an item from one of those stores that is an affiliate of Hoosier Football Tailgate, we do get reimbur- we do earn a commission on all those sales. Uh, just got to be upfront and honest with all that. But for everyone, uh, those links can be found on my bio page in um, on Twitter and Instagram and as well as on YouTube. But we'll put that aside. We get all the business stuff out of the way so we can get to do what we want to do. Talk college football because it is here. It is right around the corner. August 31st, Indiana will line up and play their first game at home against Florida International. We'll talk a little bit more about them here in a second. But, uh, you know, you got a couple more weeks here. And while I wish that uh, some of the things that I talked about last week about staying healthy – 
uh, would come to fruition. Unfortunately for the offensive line, they took a big hit when they lost Nick Kidwell, the transfer from JMU. Uh, he is gone and lost for the season uh, before a snap of the ball ever occurred so he could run out in an Indiana uniform. He has now lost all of the 24 season. He w- is a fifth year uh, player. It will probably not uh, I'm speculating that he may not ever play for Indiana. He may choose to either move on or look at uh, things in the NFL, but uh, it's still a big hit because he was going to be a counted on individual to bolster the offensive line with somebody that had playing experience. And right now, uh, because of that, we're left a little bit scrambling up front for finding that individual that may be able to step in and play. Maybe that requires to reshuffle um, who's playing what up front. Uh, uh, if you're going to do that, now's the time because you still have a couple weeks to get by with it. But that, that's some big, big uh, uh, issues there at a position that you just didn't want to see anybody get dinged up. And unfortunately, Indiana has a tendency to have old linemen get dinged up, and unfortunately as well, they lose them for the year rather than a week or two. So big blow, uh, but you got to move on. One man's misery is another man's gain, and somebody that's been waiting for their opportunity, there you go, boy. Uh, you got to take hold of it now, and he's got to find that guy that's going to be able to do that, Coach Bobstead, and he will, and he coaches all of his players, not just his top four or five he coaches them all so he'll have somebody prime ready to play um maybe somebody that's lacking in uh game experience in the big 10 but has been biding their time um i know i was reading and discussing this um because i was wondering where uh fia cables uh stood in all this uh third year player from up here in the Fort Wayne area. Um, He's also been injured on the sideline in street clothes. So I don't know what his status is, but he's lost a lot of snap opportunities. So that may put him down the depth chart as well. So they'll find somebody. They got some guys to choose from, whether it's shuffling the deck or, you know, finding that next guy there at the guard position. They'll do it and have him all ready to go there against uh, FIU here in a couple weeks. Also had some nice... um, nominations for a lot of different Indiana players this year. Um, But one that came out this other day was Curtis Rourke was named to the uh, Gordon Arm watch list uh, uh, for the 2024 season. And as well, I'm not shocking anybody here, but he is QB1. He will be the one that will be taking the snaps at that when they play FIU. And, um, According to Coach Signetti with uh, Taven, while he has improved greatly from the spring, he just still lacks a uh, consistency. And that has been something that has hampered him a little bit. But again, he's a young kid, still got time, and you don't want to throw the baby without with the bathwater because I still think the young man is a uh, big-time talent, and you got to have two um, because that first guy – You never know what could happen. And I do believe think Taven is in a position to to step up if needed, um, but at the same time provide a backup role for now. Um, But uh, we'll also see how some of these young kids coming along, Tyler Cherry, as well as Alberto Mendoza, both those young pups. It's just time. Uh, They're going to have the opportunity uh, when their time comes. And right now it's learning the system and things of that nature. But uh, Curtis Rourke got the um, Golden Arm nomination watch list uh, for the 24-24 season. And there's been a lot of different Hoosiers getting nominations in different watch lists. As I saw uh, Aiden Fisher for the Buckus. I think I saw Surratt in there. or the Bolitnikoff. Um, so a lot of individual uh, type of players, worthy players, I would say, um, getting that recognition recognition prior to the season beginning. And in my case, I think it may be some of the, maybe one of the most nominated group of Hoosiers uh, to a season starting, or at least that's what it seems like. I don't know if that's a total true or not, but it just seems that way. But um, 
congratulations to all of them that have gotten that honor and uh, have been recognized for their past production at their positions and they're getting that recognition now and it's great to see it's great to see that stuff happen for the kids that deserve it as well as a program that's starting from you know scratch with coach signetti and his staff some recruiting news here over the last couple of days that have really uh really kind of come back into i guess fruition and in, in some respects juju lewis the five-star quarterback out of georgia still a usc commit uh but it seems now that that is unlikely and that indiana it appears to be primarily in the driver's seat. So I do believe that Indiana, like we have speculated before, the relationship with uh, Coach Tino as well as Coach Shanahan and Coach Signetti seems to be paying big, big, big dividends right now with that young man and the opportunity that he may end up at Indiana seems to be increasing each and every day as we go on. I do not think we'll have a final announcement on him as it pertains to where he's going. He has said that he is not going to do anything involving colleges or choices throughout the high school football season because that as well as getting ready to start in Indiana. I think the first game start next week. Tonight there, or tomorrow night, you got the uh, high school scrimmages going on throughout the state of Indiana. So um, I don't think we'll know on Juju until well into, if not the latter part of the season. But it seems that it appears that Indiana does have a path for them to land the five-star quarterback, which would be a great get for the program and uh, a great get um, for the quarterback room. And uh, as well, because the competition at that position, you need it to in order to improve it. And it rises the cream to the top on, on anybody that's in that room. So i um, happy to see that. And hopefully that, that comes to fruition. Well, let's talk a little bit about the football schedule and, you know, I know that uh, there's been a lot of things that have been done over the years, you know, in terms of, you know, presenting the schedule and how you look at it and decipher it. For me, I would always do this type of setup with my teams um, prior to the end of camp where we took some time and deciphered the schedule and, you know, some little tidbits here and there and talked about it. So I'm going to kind of bring that approach to it in that regard um, tonight. And let's see if I can get over to my screen here. And uh, first of all, like I said, hopefully it comes back. <laughs> go back to me and I'll see if it'll be able to boot up. Charges back into the fray. Let me see if I've got it now. <laughs> that one or was it? There we go. Hey, hey, did it, did it. I'm a little bit uh, shallow on all the technology around me, but hopefully this works. But here we go. You know, Indiana coming off that three and nine season that led to the dismissal of Coach Allen and the staff, you know, points per game. Offense was only 23, 24 a game, and the defense allowing 31 and five. And again, if you go back through that schedule, there was about a handful of games that were six points or less. And had they done a better job of finishing out some of those ball games, we wouldn't be talking about where they finished last year because they would have had a stellar finish. But enter in Coach Signetti to lead the 24-25 Hoosiers. And right now you've got uh, FIU coming in on the 31st. That is going to be a 3.30 kickoff. As you can see, the most of them here, we've got the first three weeks um, of times and such. 
um, but those are always fluid. The FIU game will be on um, the Big Ten Network. So we're going to try to get through some of these and see what we got here. So FIU last year, as you can see, they've uh, they got a couple big wins early on in the year. Uh, right here against North Texas and Maine. Uh, but they only won four games last year total. And uh, Coach McIntyre has been in a, I guess you could say, a rebuild since he's been there. Um, you know, Coach Mack was at Colorado for a little bit and everything else. But when you look at this team as a whole, they've got some uh, good bodies coming back. And I'm sorry about that. Um, Everything wants to change while I'm doing stuff. But they got some good uh, players coming back with everything um, in their top 10 and things of that nature. Um, I know, one, they've got a running back that's going to be coming back to them um, this year. Um, punishment tonight. I got to go back a, a game here let's go back boy what a Okay, that's there. That's hopefully this stays there. All right, they got some guys back. Uh, the Reggie Peterson linebacker, he's a senior, as well as Potts, the safety. Uh, I can blow some of this up here maybe um, and show you some of these guys. You got uh, Patterson here, who was a really good player last year, 104 total tackles. The Potts kid right here um he had a really good year um at at the safety position very active in everything that he did the jenkins kid who is a returning quarterback he was a true freshman last year but this kid right here uh 58 which is darn good for a true freshman uh, 11 tds on the year through 12 interceptions not great um, but not unexpected for a kid like him being that he's a freshman. Um, but, you know, he's a really good returning player for them, as is uh, Christian, another safety on defense, CJ Christian, who's right here. Um, again, another 55 tackles on the year uh, total. Um, was able to get a couple uh, tackles for losses as they went along. And then wide receiver, you got Peterson. Uh, he was their second leading receiver last year. He comes back as a junior. Lawrence, uh, running back for them, is their leading rusher from a year ago, 604 yards. Um, pretty good average. They had two kids that, you know, actually played at that position pretty well. Rivers at wide receiver. He was their third leading receiver returning. Uh, Owens, the running back. Again, their top two running backs are back. And then uh, a couple guys up front, near Jackson, and then Elijah Anderson at linebacker. Again, he's in their top five or six in terms of what they like to do in uh, – their um whoops and and what they like to do offensively and defensively so you got you know that big group coming back and um it's going to be one of those things that um uh for a first game for Indiana Indiana I believe is mm, I think they're um a three FIU. Um, but this game for me is a little bit of concern just from the standpoint of they do have some guys back that have a lot of experience and um, a quarterback that is only going to get better. And also, 
uh, a running a running back room that I think is really good because they've got their two top rushers from a year ago. And then, of course, defensively, some of their top guys are back there. So while Indiana right now is a three um, um, three touchdown, I believe, um, favorite in this ball game uh, with the over and under of 51 total points, um, Indiana is going to have to play some good football day one coming out against an FIU team because this is the type of team uh, that can make you nervous uh, as a coach. Uh, David Yost, their um, record, their coordinator, uh, and um, let's see here, uh, and Javon DeWitt, their defensive coordinator, both have plenty of experience coaching ball and. Uh, David Yost is the type of coordinator that likes to spread the field and do a lot of different things there uh, with his units. And so you can see, um, again, that this is going to be a well-prepared football team week one. And Indiana is going to have to come out and play some really good football, uh, limit the limit uh, turnovers. They're going to play well in the special teams arena. And uh, uh, off uh, the defense is going to get challenged game one uh, with what they like to do against a team that can do a little bit of everything. So this will be a tough game uh, for everyone involved when that game lines up here in a couple weeks. That game will be uh, a, a dandy game for Indiana. And like I said, with a three touchdown margin in Indiana's favor right now, I don't think it will be that much. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot tighter ball game than three scores. Now, I could be wrong, and hopefully I am, but it's just one of those type of games that gives you a little bit of pause playing a team like this out of uh, Conference USA. Um, didn't have a great year, four wins, and but they got a lot of nucleus of guys back. So that one's going to be a good one. Um, and then you go to their next game. Uh, is against Western Illinois. Uh, not a lot known about these guys right now, and it's because of the change in staff. Joe Davis is the new head coach there, very good offensive coordinator. Uh, he came from Eastern Illinois, as a matter of fact, where he was there for a few years, but he's a well-respected offensive football coach. Uh, I've known him for a few number of years. I had a chance to interview him Oh, two or three weeks ago that we'll, I'll bring out when Western Illinois uh, lines up for that game. But, uh, you know, it's uh, a good ball club that he'll try to assemble and bring over, brought in a lot of transfers, very similar to what uh, Coach Signetti had done here. A lot of, uh, a lot of transfers coming in. Uh, as far as experience goes, um, you can see that, whoops, um, both Brad Wilson and McKinnon are relatively young years and experience. Uh, Brad's about 14 years, former Ball State player, know him as well, quite well. Good football coach. And then Dave, uh, Dan McEwen, uh came from Saginaw Valley State, a Division II school. But um, I don't know what you'll see from this group come that second week, uh, first week in September. But um, it's going to be a Friday night game. In Memorial Stadium, seven o'clock kickoff. So TV will be on the Big Ten Network. But um, this one, Indiana should well cruise rather easily in this type of ball game um, against Western Illinois. But you're going to get the best shot from this type of team because they're going to look at Indiana and say, "Hey, they're no different than we are. We were we weren't very good last year, and." You know, we've got a change of fortune, new head coach, a new leadership. And so uh, they'll give Indiana their best shot when it comes to that next game. Then we go to Pasadena to play Deshaun Foster and his UCLA Bruins. Um, first year head coach for Deshaun uh, and himself. Um, he's He was there at... Um, UCLA, he's been there for a number of years um, just because former player there, All-American, as well as in their Hall of Fame. Uh, but he's assembled a pretty uh, 
decent staff. Eric Bieniemy, their first year after being in Washington for one season, former Kansas City Chief Offensive Coordinator, won two Super Bowls. So you know his background and knowledge is going to be valuable uh, for Coach Foster. And then Malo is a, another young uh, coach that um, – was able to ascend to the D.C. spot after their defensive coordinator from last year um, moved on to um, USC and opened an opportunity there. But Deshaun Foster brought in a lot of NFL-flavored talent in his coaching staff, and you can bet they're going to have a a lot of people uh, interested in what they did last year and look for it to continue because you can see uh, they had, uh, what was that, four, five, six, seven, eight wins last year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, And uh, this game, uh, I do believe, is a game that Indiana can get. UCLA had a lot of turnover after Chip Kelly left, but they do have some guys back. Um, I'm going to try to blow it up here so we can see a little bit better. Um, Wide receiver, you got uh, Strudant. Let's see here. Right here, he's a returner, second in, in, in that category for him a year ago. And then also at linebacker, the Moderno kid, uh, right here, he was their second leading tackler, 56 on the season. Uh, a couple sacks he had, um, very agile co- type of player, uh, plays you know downhill. The quarterback is coming back is the Gerber's kid who, who for the most part last year, um, did a lot of good things, 11 touchdowns on the year. Uh, but only three interceptions, so he does a great job with ball, and this is another thing, almost 70% completion rate. That's pretty darn good for a young man uh, at the quarterback position, um, throwing uh, the number of balls that he did last year um, and only give up three picks. So very impressive there with him offensively. And then you look into um, uh, Loya, the wide receiver, and he was their top target last year, as well as uh, Harden, the running back. He was their second guy last year. Uh, tight end, uh, Matova, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, now, that kid um, is a big, strong kid. And I think he's one of those guys that everybody in the Big Ten is going to know who he is. Uh, he looks the pr- and very impressive uh, on tape. and. You know, once you see him play, but he's going to be an impressive player. Then at uh, defense, you got the Davies kid who's a cornerback that I think is really going to be uh, their kind of shutdown corner. You're going to see him play against the top receivers. Uh, Toya, the defensive tackle, really good. And then you got um, Kirkwood, another senior, uh, uh, another um cornerback in the mix there and don't forget they had to re- they got to replace uh I think it's the Murphy twins and then uh the defensive end from last year his name is escaping me right now um so they got to pre- replace some good bodies on on uh on uh, their defensive side of the football um and it's going to be interesting to see when everything comes around, what that all is going to look like uh, for next year. But you can see that uh, there for a first year coach, he's got a, a pretty good looking group of young men uh, to play there uh, for him in his first year. Now they play Hawaii um, in their first game. Indiana will play it, would have played two games and, uh, UCLA only has would only have played one prior to uh, against Indiana, so um, from that standpoint, um, you know Indiana will have another game in hand on them. Not that that makes much, um, but this game for Indiana is one of those games that if they want to have the year that they think they can have, uh, they're going to have to do it in a uh, with a group beating a team like this and uh to do so um 
uh, they're going to have to play some of their best ball right here against uh, UCLA. Next up is the 49ers from Charlotte. Again, another team from the American Conference, I believe. Uh, so Coach Nettie will have some familiarity with this group of people. Um, coach Biff, I call him, he's a character as a coach. He walks around and cut off sleeves on the practice field, smokes a big cigar after practice, uh, kind of a legend uh, out there. And uh, I believe Maryland is where his – background associated from uh but a lot of uh kids that he sent off to play some big time football but he is a uh coach that does a lot of good things with kids everything so i think it's going to be one of those things for him uh leading to this is going to be an interesting setup for him with this 49er team because you can see um Right now, they are they have a group of kids that did not have a lot of success and have not had a lot of success. And if you look at their coaching staff, they're young. Um, he's trying to build something there as a whole. Um, I do think that he'll be able to do do that in time, uh, but I don't know if he's going to be able to do it in a fashion that's quick enough for the uh, people that want him to have that type of success and want it now because it's a relatively new program. I don't think they've been involved much right now uh, at uh, with Charlotte's program. Um, I'm not, I'm, I want to say they just brought it back about seven, eight years ago, if my memory serves me correctly. But um, this is a group that uh, I do think that coach, does the right things with them. He'll have them well prepared and ready to go when they come in to Bloomington on that uh, Saturday. I think that's an afternoon game if memory serves me correct, but I'm not positive on that. Um, right now with some of these games, there's still a to be determined involved with it um, as it pertains to them. So it's, it's going to be, um, kind of a wait and see on all this with some of these game times um, until they get them um, ironed out with the TV and everything that goes and associated with it. So, but you can bet that he'll have a really good team coming in to um, Bloomington that uh, Saturday and uh you know, he'll have some talented kids returning uh, back uh, for Charlotte next year as they were relatively young with some of their kids. Um, and I'm not quite sure of all the transfers that they did or didn't get. Um, but I know that they tried uh, this, the Trexler kid and the Jones kid, both those quarterbacks played, you know, pretty equally throughout the season uh, last year. Um, so, again, he may be coming in to play a two-quarterback system and and do that type of thing. But he'll have some talent. Indiana, you know, this is coming off a game against UCLA. Um, so it's not a game that they can, you know, sit back and relax on. They're going to have to play their best football. And, again, I see them – you know, in this situation, they have the opportunity to put themselves in a great position before they play Nebraska. If everything works the way it could work and the football gods bless the Hoosiers for the first six weeks of the season, um, Indiana has a great chance to put themselves in a great position before they play Nebraska, which will be a monumental game for them. But right now, when you look at these six games, at least these first four games, uh, FIU will be a test. Like I said, that will be a test. Then you have you, uh, Western Illinois, a game that 
Indiana should win and win handedly. Then they go to UCLA for their first Big Ten matchup against a Bruins team that lost a head coach, Johanna Foster's first year head coach, but they got some talent returning offensively and defensively while they lost a couple talented uh, players will also be replenished there. And, um, you know, UCLA put together, like I said, like a seven win, eight win season last year, went bowling and they lost some tight ball games as well. And don't understand why Chip Kelly left, but he did for whatever reason, those to be known by nobody but Chip. Um, but Indiana going out there to Pasadena to play them in their backyard, while it's a tough match up to play against, I do believe they have an opportunity to go out there and win a game and uh, get themselves to 3-0 and uh, in a blink of an eye. Um, but again, they're are steps along that way that they have to get to uh, and they can't worry about UCLA until they get by Western Illinois and FIU. So we'll continue on here. Maryland, um, what Mike Loxley has done at Maryland in some ways you could say hopeful that Kurt Signetti will do here at Indiana. Uh, Locke has got uh, Maryland football important again in the state of Maryland. Uh, they are the school in the state of Maryland. So it's an op, he's done a great job of resurrecting a program that was down and out, was facing some allegations that weren't great. They got rid of a coach and there were other allegations that came to the forefront. They lost a player who, you know, died tragically. Um, and there was just a lot of bad things happening at, at uh, Maryland. And enter Coach Loxley from Alabama, 32 years. He's fifth season overall. And you can see last year they read it off their schedule. Their schedule started with um, very similar to Indiana's schedule when you look at it because they played Townsend. Uh, and Charlotte and Virginia. So very similar to what Indiana has. Then they played Michigan State and beat Michigan State handedly up there. Um, Virginia beat handedly, beat Charlotte by a couple scores, and then they played Indiana. And, you know, that was a long day for Indiana and Maryland. And they raced off to a 5-0 and start before they ran into Ohio State. The one they probably wish they had back was this game against uh, Illinois. Um, and then, you know, this game against Northwestern. So uh, while they had a, a season that was really good, um, they had some of their struggles uh, that they had. But overall, they raced out to a 5-0 and start and was able to get to eight wins the latter part of the season, but they raced out to a five and zero start, but then they lost four straight before they ultimately beat Nebraska at Nebraska in a dogfight, thirteen to ten. And Tua's gone. Um, they're going to be replacing that aspect of stuff because Tua's graduated. Um, they do have a transfer coming in from North Carolina State um, that I do believe they think is pretty darn good that they were able to get and their defense for the most part is going to have a great nucleus returning uh including uh uh hypolot uh if i'm saying that name right he's back and he's a football player he is a really good football player but um they're going to have a lot of their weapons back uh in toll at maryland when indiana entertains them week five um, at home. So again, an opportunity like Maryland had last year, they got off to a great start and was able to get to that five and O number and felt pretty good about themselves and kind of struggled coming home, but they did enough to have an eight win season. And that's not out of the realm of possibility for Indiana either. So, um, you know, would you think of that, uh, Maryland 
is another game that is type of team that Indiana has got to beat in order to have the season they want. There's games in the Big Ten that when you look at the schedule, you look at it and say, we got to beat them. If we want a chance of anything in a positive light, we've got to beat them. And, you know, that's the guys that will more or less be in the middle to lower pack of the Big Ten, uh, the Maryland's, the UCLA's, and then the next team on the board, Northwestern. Again, head coach Braun came on last year after the Fitzgerald uh, debacle that happened there and dealt with all types of stuff with hazing and stuff. And um, he was named interim coach. And, you know, they, you know, didn't start off well. They struggled at the quarterback position. They played as many as three of those guys. But um, Coach Braun did enough to, again, win eight ball games and um, got the full time gig there. Very good coordinator, very well known as a defensive coordinator. Second season, um, he went out and hired a young coordinator, uh, Zach Lugin. Uh, I believe he comes from South Dakota State, if I'm not mistaken, or one of those top perennial 1AA type schools. And then uh, Tim McCardle, uh, who's been around for 24 years in the NFL and all around. But he, uh, you know, some experience there. And, of course, David's experience as a defensive coordinator. He's got a young, youthful staff, but some good ball coaches. But when you look at them last year, overall, when you look at their schedule, um, and I did it again, when you look at their schedule and how it all came back to them, they started at Rutgers, lost that game, came back, beat UTEP, lost to Duke, but then they, they beat a team like Minnesota. And those are the teams that I'm talking about when you're playing a team like Minnesota and Maryland and even Rutgers to that matter. Those are the games you got to win. And they beat Minnesota. They ran into a buzzsaw with Penn State. Then they had Howard, which got them another win. Uh, They lose to Nebraska, but they go and beat Maryland. They get Maryland at home. And this is a game, like I said, Maryland would probably looked at and wanted back. But Maryland, they they beat Maryland handedly. Then they again they lost a tough game to Iowa, and that's how Iowa won last year, ugly. But then they went on and won their next four in a row. They beat Wisconsin at Wisconsin by two touchdowns. Surprisingly. That's surprising. And even did that to Purdue. And then they won a tight one against Illinois, and then they beat Utah. In, in the uh, bowl game, and Utah was no slouch. So what Dave Braun was able to accomplish at Northwestern last year was phenomenal uh, in terms of how he was able to get them to eight wins and get themselves to the bowl game and win that against a team like Utah. So, um, again, game six for, the, for uh, Indiana, it's in Evanston, Illinois, and that game is going to play, be played on their campus at their field down by uh, Lake Michigan. And I've seen some video and pictures of it. It's going to be an interesting setup. Great, great uh, scenic views of Lake Michigan um, to be played at. But there are some hurdles uh, teams are going to have to get over on that on that particular field uh, in terms of the coaches in the booth and other things that, you know, they're going to have to address to uh, adjust to um, locker room set up some other things of, in that nature. But um, again, a game, the Hoosiers got to win. And if they can do that, they got a chance to be six and zero into the bye week. Six and zero going into the bye week is not an unreasonable uh, expectation. It may be a tad, but not crazy that they could be six and zero going into a bye week before playing Nebraska at home. But in my in overall opinion, four and two would be a great number to land on after the first six weeks. So that's kind of what we're looking at the first six weeks of the season. Um, 
as it goes, you know, we'll get to that um, point in the year where you're going to start playing the big top dogs in the in the Big Ten, and here comes one of them with Coach Rule in his third season there at Nebraska. Offensively last year, very, very uh, suspect. They just they weren't very good on the offensive side of the football. Defensive side of the ball was really good, but you can see from – Coach Rule, 35, 34 years coaching. They've had a lot of great teams that he's been around. He led a great turnaround at Baylor, um, which was not a team that was easy uh, to or program to win at, easy to win out. Did the same thing at Temple. Um, last year, they lost, you know, the first two games of the year. Um, Minnesota at there and then they lost out at Colorado uh in a tight ball game at halftime but the second half for whatever reason their defense really really um tanked and then they played Northern Illinois won that ball game back with Louisiana Tech so they you know they probably looked at last year's schedule and thought the same thing uh we got to we can beat Minnesota we can beat Colorado and we could be 5 and 0 oh before we play Michigan and I'm sure that's what they were thinking. Uh, but they weren't able to get those two W's. They come back with two games that they definitely should win, and they do. And then they play Michigan and get uh, thwatted. Um, but, you know, they do. They beat Illinois at Illinois. They beat Northwestern at home. They handle Purdue well. They lose a tough one to Michigan State and Maryland back-to-back. And then lose a seven-point game to Wisconsin, and lose a three-point game to Iowa. So when you look at that, there was three losses that were by three points or less, and then a game that was by seven points or less. So you're talking uh, three, six, nine, 16 points over their last four games of the year is what they lost by total. So that tells you everything you need to know right there about their year and the frustration they had to feel with it Um, because throw out a couple of the games that, you know, were not winnable in some respects. But those last four games of the year, if they do a little bit more offensively, you know, they got a chance there, you know, they're looking at a, a tremendous season after after what they went through i mean if they win the last four games of the year they're talking a nine win season and everybody's celebrating that but they came away with a chip on their shoulder and with what they've got coming back on both sides of the football uh nebraska is going to be loaded especially defensively their defensive side of the ball is going to be whoops what i do I went into a different mode there, didn't I? Um, their defense. Uh, well, we'll leave it like that. But a lot of these guys are back <laughs> trying to do things the right way. And I ended up doing the wrong way because I think I'm too smart for myself. But anyway, a lot of these defensive guys are back on their defense, which I think is going to be a huge, huge, huge benefit for them heading into this year. Um, their defense is going to be if one of the best in the Big Ten, I think. They've got a lot of guys coming back, and if they can find an offense that can put some bo- points on the board, they got a defense that they can count on and shut down. But that was their problem last year. Uh, too much relying on the defense and not enough production out of the offense, and unfortunately at the end of the year it cost them, and uh, they lost some games they shouldn't. Game number eight. Enter Judd Fish and the Washington Huskies coming off the national championship game last year, losing to Michigan. Um, So when you look at it, uh, the Big Ten has the one two of the national title game from a year ago. Uh, Good that this game is in in Bloomington. Now, Washington lost a ton of players uh, to graduation and some decided not to stick around, but they're. They've got youthfulness on both sides of the football. Uh, some interesting names there at the coordinator positions. You got Bren, Brennan Carroll. That's Pete Carroll's son. 
and then Steve Belichick, which is Coach Belichick's son. So he's brought in a couple name recognizable figures to run his offense and defense. Now Jed is going to run the offense for the most part, but in, in the day to day stuff, I'm sure Brennan's going to run most of it. Um, but when you look at their offense, defense, I mean, how do you re- how do you replace a Michael Penix? You know, there's a kid that Indiana had and. He went and transferred out there and lit it up. But, you know, how do you replace a kid like that? Or how do you, you replace a kid like a, 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 du, a, a Duzo, a Duzang? I'm not saying that. In that the Roman uh, who had, what he had, 1,600 yards last year. I mean, though, it, that's a tough ask for anybody to uh, try to reduplicate that uh offense from a year ago and of course we all know coach DeBoer went to uh Alabama after his stellar performance there in Washington and now we got coach Fish again another game in Bloomington um another very winnable game based upon what Washington has lost and I'm not quite sure they didn't they didn't want to they did not go out and bring in a bunch of transfers um they brought some but most part they're they're playing with the hand they're dealt with which for the most part was pretty good because coach DeBoer and his staff did a great job but that is another game um again new coach so you look at it you got Uh, Western Illinois, new coach. Uh, UCLA, new coach. Um, uh, Jed Fish, new coach. Jonathan Smith, Michigan State, new coach. What's that? Five. So five of them are all new coaches, and I'm probably missing one in there. So there was a lot of turnover last year and a lot of it in the Big Ten. But Jonathan Smith, uh, for those that may not be over familiar with him, he comes from Oregon State, where he led Oregon State to some of their best years of the last two years. Oregon State's a very difficult job uh, to win at, especially when you're playing second fiddle to Oregon, most part. But he did a great job out there. Um, of course, we know what all was involved at Michigan State. You, When you talk about football last year, Michigan and Michigan State both kind of took the cake. Um their head coach got caught up in a scheme that uh, didn't look good. It was a huge, ugly black eye for the program. And they went out and find a good coach in Jonathan Smith after Oregon State was kind of left out by all the big boys. And he basically brought – all his uh, people with him. Uh, Rossi's the defensive coordinator who's been with him for a while, as has been Lindgren. So a lot of the Ohio State, Ohio State or, I'm sorry, Oregon State guys came back. Um, as it pertains to their roster, you just don't going to, you're not going to know uh, who stayed, who, who didn't in terms of what they've got coming back. But again, uh, Another aspect, a new coach, new program, another opportunity for uh, the Hoosiers. And it will be tough to win in East Lansing, but the last time they did was a couple years ago in crazy fashion. Uh, But they found a way to win up there, and um, this will be a big game for them, especially if they're riding on a high on any type of games where they've got a couple wins behind their backs you could go into that week nine uh feeling pretty good about yourself and the opportunity to do that as well as good so you come into game 10 then you got sharon moore and everything at michigan uh tony alford left ohio state to join him at michigan his first year there and wink martindale the defensive coordinator tons of years in the nfl um He's come in uh, at 21 years overall, very smart football coach, very good defensive coordinator. Uh, he's a uh, offensive coordinator's nightmare in some things because he likes to do things schematically that – uh, will catch you off guard. Um, very smart with that. Now, Michigan has had their issues in the as it pertains to some of the stuff in the in the news here lately for the Im- impermissible recruiting contacts that Coach Harbaugh got a show cause of a, 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 a fine or what do you want to call it uh, placed upon him uh, for that. And then Sharon Moore 
is waiting to hear back on what all is going to happen with the sign stealing uh, situation with Connor Stallings because there was 150 text messages supposedly or allegedly that were uh, not disclosed but later found that Coach Moore and had erased from his cell phone and NCA was able to find him, bring him back to life. And so he's facing some possible discipline there. And then when you look at it overall, Indiana or uh, Michigan's a second uh, uh, violate, you know, team with a violation. So they got two, you know, they're going to be looked at differently by the NCA because they already got one hit against them for the recruiting stuff. And now this is a possible two. So if I'm betting, um, I, I could see more being suspended for a game. Uh, the tip top of the iceberg would be to, um, make them ineligible for the big 10 championship this year. Um, but that's about all they can do because the NCAA tournament, they have no say so in because that's outside of their realm or control. But again, you know, they got to replace JJ McCarthy, Jack Tuttle, familiar name there with what he was to Indiana. It appears that he's in line. He's had a very good spring and he's doing well this summer, but he could be the new starting quarterback there. They got to replace uh, Blake Corum, but you got Donovan Edwards sitting there ready to go. Indy, uh, Michigan's going to be a reload uh, type of program. The best thing about um, this game is the fact that it's in Bloomington. And that's that, that's some of the good stuff because playing Michigan at home is a much better uh, opportunity than playing them up there in the big house. And Michigan just hasn't played well in at Indiana. Hasn't for the last couple of years, even the year they beat Indiana beat them. I mean, Michigan was not very good uh, on the field that day. So new staff, new, new general, um, defending champions, uh, NCAA champions, or national champions in college football. Um, it'd be nice for them to come in there with a uh, seven and three record at the time. At worst, um, maybe better. Uh, but uh, that'll be a tough one for them to get. But again, not uh, impossible. Then they go to Ohio State play uh ryan day and everything there you got chip kelly who's a mastermind of offense jim knowles is kind of a mastermind of defense they've got a lot of guys returning they went out and got in a lot of guys via the transfer poll with money not being an option um their biggest question is who's going to lead their quarterback uh room and that's their biggest question for the most part. And and then who's going to be their top dog on the outside because this cat's gone. So he's gone. McCord's gone. Um, so that's going to be an interesting dynamic right there. But this cat's back, and he's a, he's a, a stud. Um, and so uh, Ohio State just, you know, they just reload, man. Um, Coach Day, like I said, has gone out this year to basically win the national championship. I mean, that's essentially what he's doing is to win the national championship. And that's what I see him trying to accomplish. And uh, I do think they've got a great opportunity to do that. And we'll have to see overall what that all leads to. But um uh, Indiana will have to go uh, into Columbus to play Ohio State. And that time of year is tough. You know, you're all both beat up. Um, you don't know what you're going to look like there. But, uh, you know, for whatever reason, Indiana's played them tough last couple of years. And uh, Ohio State's been in a dogfight with them. And that's what you got to hope for, that you can be in a game that's a dogfight, tooth and nail type of thing. and Hopefully Ohio State makes a lot of, you know, mistakes, turns the ball over, and you get a you, you sneak in and sneak out with a W. But um that'll be a tough ball game. Don't uh I don't think anybody's expecting it won't be, but um 
it, it'll be interesting to see where Ohio State is at that time, as well as the Hoosiers. And after that one, of course, we had back home to play the Purdue Boilermakers, Ryan Walter's second year, uh, Graham Harold's second year, as is it Kevin Kane, both young coordinators, uh, very good coaches. You know, Purdue had some of the same problems last year with, you know, that Indiana had when you look at their overall uh, schedule and stuff. But, um, you know, Indiana in that game last year, if they could just close it out, it's a non, it, again, it's a W, um, but they couldn't close it out. Um, this game that Purdue won at, was, at Minnesota was surprising to everyone, but it was a huge win, um, as well as this win up against Illinois. Uh, so Coach Walters has shown that his team is capable of, you know, winning some big games against opponents that would no one would give him the opportunity against. But Indiana is going to have to play very well. Cuts in uh, the the herd kid, uh, Hudson card is back at quarterback. You've got him. Uh, a couple of his favorite uh, targets are back again as well. You know, his second year in the offense, I mean, last year, I think I, think I can see, you can see that pretty decently. Uh, he had 58% completions, uh, 217 yards a year, 15 TDs, and only eight interceptions on the year. And he threw it 365 times. And that's what hurt Purdue a lot last year. They didn't really have a run game. And they're going to have to develop one in the Big Ten because you just can't set back and sling it all year. And then defensively, I do think they'll have some of the you know studs back, the safety, all American kid that came on the scene last year, uh, had a phenomenal year. He had six uh, uh, picks on the year and uh, two fumble recoveries, uh, just a dynamite year for Dylan on what he was able to do as a true freshman. So Indiana's got their hands full there, that latter part of the schedule. But when, you know, when you look at it overall, um, Indiana has got an opportunity there when we go back and look at the big picture again of having the opportunity with a bye week uh, to have two weeks to prepare for Nebraska. That's the bye. Uh, after the Northwestern game. But you can see that 6-0 and is a very distinct possibility with this schedule, with the home games that they got. And um, at worst, 4-2, and two, maybe 5-1. and one. So there's a great opportunity on the front end of the schedule to get things rolling before you head in to playing Nebraska, you know, Nebraska, Washington and Michigan State. And if I had to say the toughest game is going to be that one, and they're going to have two weeks after that to, you know, have a chance to win before they get to the Ohio States and Michigans at the latter part of the year. So it's it, by far, it's a schedule that is um, very much in the favor of Indiana, uh, very much in favor because you have eight home games and, and it's an opportunity to play in your backyard for eight weeks of the season and uh, that's a plus uh, overall um, the biggest the biggest thing is uh, we got to get the, the, the stands filled honestly and from day one up until the last game of the season to have great crowds um, and I understand part of that is going to win winning all you know cures all and puts butts in the seat so um, but a schedule that's doable very doable for the Hoosiers, very doable for Coach Signetti and his staff. And like I said, eight and four is not out of the realm of possibility. Uh, seven and five is probably a better landing spot. But if things can go white that first six week of the season, then I do think they have a chance to be an eight win team, nine win team on the year and get to the Bulls uh, overall. And uh, I do think overall, regardless of what we think they'll finish at, I do think they're a bold team this year and be disappointed if they weren't. So um, we'll see. The game has to be played between the white lines and everything that goes with it. And that's what you got to do um, because you can talk up all you want. But at the end of the day, you got to back it up on the scoreboard. Just a couple things here. Remember, who's your 
tailgate.com is our official website site hoosiertailgate.com on there you'll find a link to the hoosier tailgate apparel store where you can pick up your favorite t-shirt beanies and some other items there uh, for your game day apparel wearing um, but again all that money would go back into the show uh, but you can find all that on hoosiertailgate.com uh, please like comment and subscribe on youtube uh, and then retweet on Twitter and X and, and all that good stuff. It helps a lot. And remember, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook on Twitter or X, I should say, is uh, at Hoosier Tailgate or Coach Griff 55. And then on Instagram and Facebook, it's at Hoosier Tailgate 55 on those two uh, areas of social media. And again, if you ever have any questions, you can email me at Hoosier tailgate at gmail.com. Be glad to correspond with anyone that wants to ask a question or has a question for me at, uh, by all means, feel free to reach out. Um, when we get going here, uh, we'll be in a Monday, Thursday type of setup with Mondays being a review of the game from Saturday, as well as any news from the pressers that occur on Monday, because that's usually when the coaches are available to discuss the previous game as well as well as provide injury reports and such. Uh, with that. So that will be on Monday evenings at seven. And then on Thursday evenings at seven, we'll have our regular uh, coaches breakdown of the, of the opponent where we'll have the coaches room, uh, the video room with some game film and things of that magnitude, uh, all brought to you by quickie cut scout, uh, game scout software. Um, great, great product and coaches that are out there, give them a look. Um, because you'll be quite surprised what you can get for your dollar from them. It's very uh, user-friendly, very similar to Huddle and things of that uh, magnitude, but um, I've used it for two years and liked it pretty good. Quick cut, and we'll have the video room and breakdown for all our opponents as well. Like I said, Monday's a recap of video as well from the Hoosiers Saturday or Friday night ball game. Hey, well, thank you for joining me here this evening. Remember to hit uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Get to our affiliates if you can and help us out. Uh, if you feel like you're going to need to buy something for those uh, tailgating days there at Memorial Stadium, we've got items there for you to look at if you want. But again, thanks for joining me here tonight. I will see you next time right here on the Believe Network. Thank you for joining us. Good night, everybody.